Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about why I am so stoked to be a part of the thing that's happening in Bude. Um, you, we, it, you are leading lights, I believe. And I think that the world is looking to us, and hopefully through social media, whatever, the world will look to us. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd like to do my own talk. That's all right. Um, but, the, you know, the world is looking to us, and we have to step up. And we are stepping up. There's some incredible stuff going on. And I'm really proud to be part of it. But also, I'm actually uh, really proud to have been enabled by it, if you like. So, actually, um, everybody in this room has had a part to play in the story that I'm about to tell you. Um, and you know who you are. And I'm going to possibly make you stand up or something. Um, Yeah, cool, okay, thank you. Right, okay, so I am the founder and run the Two Minute Beach Clean campaign. It started here in Bude, um, and, uh, oh, the typeface is different. <laughs> Damn it, the typeface is our typeface. But anyway, this is what makes the Two Minute Beach Clean, and this is what makes Bude, and this is what makes this conference. So, collaboration, community, passion and personality. Without those things, none of this would happen. Uh, so, unfortunately, the, the typeface has made it all not work properly. But anyway, these are the people that I admire, that inspire me, that m get me out of bed in the morning and make me think that I want to carry on with this project when it's taken up all my time and I've got people hassling me and, you know, all kinds of stuff. But... WTF, Ado, he's not here, unfortunately. What an inspiration to everybody. He's a doer. He's playing to his strengths as being a doer. CR something P, Deb over there and her crew, clean Crooklets Beach every month. And they have done since the last six years, I think it is. They recently got an accolade. Deb was instrumental in starting the refill for the sea pool and the refill cups. And I'll talk about how the funding came through from that in a minute. Um, Beach Care, Neil over there, uh, is the man who is kind of like our godfather, if you like. He's the man that enables it all to happen by providing insurance, advice, contacts. Um, and it's brilliant. The It's Not Rubbish Art Show was a really brilliant thing that happened um, at Bamfest a couple of years ago. Um, and it has then been taken on to other places. So this summer in Boscastle, I don't know if anybody went down to the National Trust Cafe down there, they said that it was the most successful exhibition they've ever had, and it was stuff from It's Not Rubbish Art Show. So we've enlightened lots and lots of people that have walked through the doors. Um, I'm not sure what crew is, because it's missing off the bottom. Anyway, Butte Cleaner Seas. Um, again, we're here because of that. Two Minute Beach Clean happening here. The plastic movement. You guys, please, if you, are you next to a lifeguard? If you're next to a lifeguard, hug them now, okay? <laughs> or at least give them a massive cheer. They did something absolutely incredible last weekend. Su dawn till dusk, beach clean. And it was brilliant. And they took, how many tons, Jim? Do you know? We're not 100% sure yet, but 407 people. Okay. 407 people. When, when we did the crooklets clean, there were more people cleaning the beach than there were sitting on it. And I think all the holidaymakers were a bit kind of like, blimey, what have, we, what have we come to? This is a bit weird. They're cleaning up around us. They couldn't leave anything. Um, and Jan Wells, uh, Jan's not here, I don't think, but Jan Wells has been doing a two-minute beach clean. She's got a mission to do a two-minute beach clean every day for a year, uh, which is just brilliant. She's on day 268, I think it is today. You know, and she's just a brilliant ambassador because she is one of the people that she inspires me to get up and go down the beach and do my stuff. And she inspires other people by posting all her stuff to Twitter and Instagram. OK, next slide. So we're back to the winter of 2013, 2014. Um, some of us were probably excited by the swells and the storms. I wasn't. I was down at Crooklets. Was anybody down at Crooklets after the storm hit? Yeah, the beach huts were wrecked. There was detritus everywhere. It was absolute chaos. Um, and early that winter, I decided that I wanted to try and make a difference. Um, and because of the stuff that's going on here in Bude, um, I didn't really want to, um, next slide please, Nigel, sorry. I didn't really want to um, kind of double up people's efforts. So I started going down to the beach and taking pictures and hashtagging two minute beach clean. And after the storms, after that day at Crooklets, I went and did a beach clean, took a picture, went back the next day, 
next day, next day, because there was so much that I couldn't possibly kind of imagine cleaning it up. And it was so overwhelming that I had to kind of step back and go, okay, I'll do some today, I'll do a bit tomorrow, do a bit the next day, keep on, keep on, keep on. And if I can use my Twitter followers, I had, a, I don't know what it was, 5,000 or something at the time, if I can get them to do it, then maybe that will double my effort. So if one person does it, great, that's two of us doing it, three people, four people, five people. Um, and, and it's that same thing about the microbeads, you know, it's overwhelming. You know, we, I, I can't go out there and save an orangutan. I can't go out there and stop poachers shooting elephants. And I can't clear up all the plastic on the beaches. But we have done and we can. And that's the idea of the two-minute beach clean. Um, so unfortunately, we, ah, this is, never mind. Okay. So the aim of the Two Minute Beach Clean when I started it was always to harness the power of social media to inspire others. The idea of it was to fill the gaps between the organised cleans. So if you can't get to an organised clean, and even the most committed people have commitments outside of beach cleans. Also, beach cleans tend to be for a devoted crew who turn up regularly, and we know they do um, because of ADO's, the work ADO does. Um, so I didn't want to step on anybody's toes, and I didn't want to duplicate the effort. So there's no point in me organising a beach clean on Tuesday and Ado doing one on Wednesday. What's the point of that? But maybe if we pick up some stuff on Tuesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday, it might make Ado's job easier. Um, and in that, in that respect, uh, you can't really see that, but part of the idea was to try and inspire these new people and to feed them into people like WTF, into crap, into um, the MCS or SAS. The whole idea was trying to get a new audience. Okay, next one please, Nigel. Um, so I was pretty stoked, we hit 300. Woohoo! yeah, that was great. There were 300 posts, 600 minutes. There's a bit of cleaning up doing. That's great, that was on Instagram. And then this person over here hassled me. Uh, next slide please, Nigel. Oh, sorry, um, okay, a uh, little bit of a digression. This is a, a tweet that came through in 2015. It's the best one. It's the best one ever because it says, our first two-minute beach clean from up our creek. It is a bit min minute, minute, mi oh, yeah. anyway, but we'll do better next time. So that person's made a pledge to me there. They've made a pledge that they'll do more. And they've made a pledge to say they've started their journey. And then maybe, 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 maybe when they go back there, they'll go, why the hell is that thing on the beach? Where's that come from? Is it me? Is it my life? Is it how I live? You know, do I dispose of my stuff properly? And maybe, just maybe, maybe, maybe they will start the journey. That's the point. That's the point. Okay, next one, please. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So why the two-minute beach clean works? Okay, why does it work? Um, it, it's manageable. Two minutes is nothing. It's shorthand for, got two minutes? Spare a minute? Spare a couple of minutes? It's manageable. It makes it not daunting. Many hands make light work. <coughs> Science sometimes can tell us off. It can tell us that we're killing our planet. And it can tell us that if we don't do something about it, you know, we're all going to die a horrible death. It does do that sometimes. We all know that. The two-minute beach clean will never tell you off. It will always thank you for the work that you do. So if you find a plastic cup, nothing, brilliant. Um, if you find a plastic cup or something on the beach and you pick it up, that plastic cup will not degrade into microplastics. That piece of rope that you pick up off the beach will not end up round a seal's neck. That's the point. So everything is always, always positive. And it tells you when it's okay to stop feeling guilty. So you might have this overwhelming, oh, I just can't do enough. It's okay, you've done your bit. Just go back tomorrow, go back the next day, go back this afternoon, next week, whatever. Um, it embraces you as a family, and that's where my friend here, Dolly, comes in. Um, and it makes a lonely activity um, become part of a community. So you can go and look at the hashtag and you can see what other people are doing. You can comment. People will comment on your, your hashtags. And people will, you know, it, you become a family without actually having a family. So you could be out on the most remote Scottish beach. Uh, like one of our people works in the Shetlands. She's out every day. She gets loads of comments from people. And we send her our love via likes and shares, whatever we can do. So she feels part of the community. Um, next one, please, Nigel. Aha! Enter Dolly. So um, here, here she is with her second boyfriend, <laughs> the amazing Mr. Fanning. 
Um, she actually goes down to Portugal and hassles everybody at the, at the Rip Curl Pro every year. And this year, her mission, I've got a flag for her to wave in front of the webcast. So we should all watch it for that. <laughs> anyway, Dolly came on board and said, you need to sort out the social media. And she now does a board coordination. She treats everybody like a family. Um, and she's grown the Instagram to 11.8 thousand. She's grown Twitter to 3,100. Grown Facebook to... Um, 5,300 likes. Next one, please. Um, and so, as a result of that work, this is this morning. Instagram, 22,178 posts. Those are the ones that are spelt right, <laughs> are using the right hashtag, and that doesn't include Twitter or Facebook. It is many, many, many thousands. Um, so, you know, this is awesome, actually, when I think about it, and it really it starts to choke me up because that's manly in Australia. That's Carlsbad in the USA. That's outside Sainsbury's, and I'll talk, talk about that in a minute. Um, and I think this one's somewhere, uh, somewhere else. There's one from, I think that's a pen hail. But these images are coming from all over the world. Next one, please, Nigel. Um, and we, a little while ago, from January to April this year, we were able to, ta we were able to log the cleans. Okay, the guys who had their geotagging on their phones when they were logging on to Instagram and posting two-minute beach clean. Um, in April, uh, Instagram stopped us from being able to do this. But this is a cross-section of the, the two-minute beach cleans that were posted from around the world between January this year and April this year. So that's three months' worth. So it's kind of gone a bit mental. <laughs> Um, you know, and it, and it starts here, and it starts here with everybody, you know, inspiring me to get off my ass and sharing and liking and using social media. So we did a, we did a national two-minute beach clean day on June the 11th this year with the support of the BBC and Spring Watch on their Do Something Great campaign. We saw, well, you didn't stop all weekend, did you? All weekend, it was that they were hammering in, and we, it was like a four or five hundred percent uptake. And where we were getting five or six posts maybe a day, now, as a result of that, we're getting 20, 30, 40, lots and lots of posts. I mean, we've had 120, I think, since Monday. So it's getting bigger all the time. So what else can the Two Minute Beach Clean do? What can we do with this thing that we've got, with, with these images? OK, kids love it. We can educate through images. I'll show you a picture in a minute. We've got a database of 22,000 images. We can use that to campaign. We can reward beach cleaning. Um, and we can also come up with solutions. Two-minute solution is the idea for stopping it in the first place. So next slide, please. Okay. I take this into schools, and I talk to schools, and I say, what do you think that is? What do you think they say? Jellyfish. Thank you. <laughs> that's that. Uh, and they do. Kids think that's a jellyfish, and when I explain it to them that the jellyfish is the turtle's favourite food, and if a, if a jelly, uh, sorry, if, if a turtle was to eat that, it would go into its stomach, it wouldn't be able to digest it, um, and it would therefore not be able to take on the nutrients it needs and probably die, because it looks like the turtle's favourite food. This is a biodegradable balloon. That's how balloons biodegrade. Um, and of course, it says on it, Pizza Hut. You know, that's not good enough. So we can use that to educate people, and also pa perhaps to send it to Pizza Hut to say, come on, guys, you need to stop this because it's insanity. Okay, next slide, please. Um, HP, uh, oh, sorry, I'm not supposed to mention their name. Hubert Packword, <laughs> they lost a container um, and uh, in the ocean at some point over the last couple of years. And Tracy Williams, who runs the Lego Lost at Sea campaign down in Newquay, she started noticing them, and she started noticing people posting them, so she asked us to contact our network to, be to ask people to look out for these things. Um, and so people duly did, and they posted pictures of them and geotagged them so we could see where they were coming up. Tracy made a map, and they were, it, it showed that they were turning up all over Europe. Hubert Packward admitted they'd lost a few hundred thousand or whatever it was. They didn't actually know, but they said, OK, well, we'll clean them up. But with the images that were coming through from our boys and girls and also Tracy's network, um, they, we were able to say to them, this stuff's all over. You've got to do more than just clean it up. You can't turn up. It's not like the, um, the pink bottles that all arrived on one beach. You can't go and clean them up. You've got to do something about it. As a result of that, and Tracy's campaigning, uh, Hubert Packward uh, gave, I think the figure's 15,000, 
to the Marine Conservation Society um, to be administered uh, by myself and Neil from Keep Britain Tidy and also Tracy um, to be given out to beach clean product projects. Um, so I think ADO got some funding for some pickers. Um, the money for the first batch of these refill cups came from that fund. Um, and actually that fund has gone on to sort of start new groups and keep things moving. So there's power in that. You know, we've got this database of stuff that we can throw back at the industry and say, this isn't good enough. Okay, next one, please. Um, we also reward people. Adam um, from Surf Dome is going to talk later about the amazing work they're doing in reducing their plastic packaging. But Adam supports us, and they offer, every couple of weeks, we give out prizes to the best pictures or the most loyal or whoever it is um, that we think deserves a bit of money and they also get a pair of flip-flops and so we're able to thank these people for the work they're doing they're doing it on their own but we've sent flip-flops to the Shetlands and we've sent money to Cyprus to a lady who was really upset that her beach was devastated by a storm and we're able to kind of through work with partners like, like Adam um, to sort of reward people for the work they do that's okay we, um, the uh, the bottle is one of these. We, we have a bottle, and one of the things that we want to do is um, start two-minute two minute solutions. So the two-minute solutions are exactly these things. You know, get yourself a sea pool bottle, get yourself a refill cup, cut plastic out from your life as much as you can. There's a film with me and Nat on it on the internet about the whole thing. It's brilliant. Watch it. She's great. Um, I just sort of mooch around and, and uh, rant. <laughs> um, but... Uh, it's worth doing. So the two-minute two minute solution is our way of saying it's easy to do little changes that make a big difference. Microbeads, cut them out of your life. Plastic bottles, cut them out of your life. Okay. And then we've got our two-minute beach leaning stations, which anyone's welcome to use if they want, fancy a lean at the beach. But actually, the two-minute beach clean stations, there's one right outside the door if anybody wants to check it out. It's been there for about a year. Again, beach care... Our godfather, Neil over there, part-funded the first trial of the beach clean stations. Adam part-funded it through Surf Dome. We put eight of these beach clean stations, next picture please, um, onto beaches. There was one at, one at Crooklets. Um, and this has come from an idea actually from Crap as well. So lots of people were involved in this. Um, in the, in the, uh, the first trial on Crooklets Beach, there are many factors involved in, in, in counting litter, but thanks to the work of Deb, who does a monthly beach clean and counts everything on that monthly beach clean, we were able to compare <coughs> the amounts of litter on Crooklets Beach for the year that our station was there compared with the year before. So we kind of have a rough idea whether or not the litter is going up or down. Generally, I understand there was a trend for about 20% drop over Cornwall. However, Crooklets showed a 61% drop in litter during that year. Okay, and we, f we counted that as a win. I'm claiming it. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> Next one, please. Um, so, okay, here we go. Uh, we now have 140 of those signs in Ireland, and Tasca bought 140 of them. Um, and that means that each and every blue flag beach in Ireland has got a two minute beach clean station. And it enables them to tick their boxes. So when you're doing your Blue Flag Award uh, thing, you've, you've got to tick a box that says environmental education criteria, uh, environmental education. The Two Minute Beach Clean Station ticks that immediately. So you've, part of your work is done by having that campaign running. So it's, you know, it's great stuff. And, and if each and every one of those 140 stations is reducing litter by 60%, even by 5%, it's a win. OK, next one, please. Um, so people love them. We get pictures through all the time. Kids love using them. There we go, little litter pickers all, from all around the country. Um, there's a map now. Next one, please, Nigel. Um, so this is our map. The island, island hasn't been done yet because we've got to do all the coordinates, but that's just me being lazy. Um, so we've now got all these around Devon and Cornwall. Each one of these is a litter picking station. We're talking to people all the time. I got an email from the MOD who have got lots of land yesterday saying, well, they want to talk to us about two-minute litter pick stations. Um, so this thing is growing. It has brought in more than 50,000 quid to a local sign-making company based in the southwest. You know, it employs Dolly part-time to administer it, talk to people, 
do all the paperwork, get the insurance sorted out, ship them out. Um, you know, so this thing is growing, and this thing is really starting to kind of go, to be honest, a bit bonkers. Um, right, next slide. We've got six two-minute litter pick stations on Dartmoor now. They contacted me and said, we really like your idea, can we do it? I said, okay, tell you what, we'll do it for you. So we've produced six of these, and they go out with the, with the rangers. So when the rangers are working in a certain place on Dartmoor, they put them out, and then people, you know, these are, we're talking litter hotspots. So people are encouraged to think about the litter that they're dropping, maybe, not drop that litter, but also make a positive contribution to Dartmoor being nice. And we want, to, we want this to go everywhere, you know. We, we're, we're not... Yeah, there's no, there's no bounds to the ambition. Um, next one, please. Okay. Um, so what's next? More of this, please, you guys, because you guys are making this happen. Collaboration, community, passion, and personality. That's what we need. That's what the planet needs. Um, and without it, we are nothing, because, you know, the governments are very slow. Politics is, you know, we want to we wanna, we wanna really start kicking up here, and we can do it because we've got this power. People are looking to us. We want to talk to schools. They're the next generation. They love the two-minute beach clean. We want to take it through there. We've got a small grant from Reef to, to do a little pack, little stickers to give away to kids and, and to go and sort of spend some time in schools, which is wonderful. So if anybody wants to schools visit, we'll do that. I want to make Bude plastic free, yeah? I want all those events that go on on the castle grounds, I want them to be single-use plastic free. And there are people probably in this room who can make that happen. I want Cornwall to be plastic free. The, whoever signs the contract in the council for making the, the, those events happen, for allowing them to happen, can stipulate on that contract, you must be 100% plastic free. There must be zero waste. We could all send an email. I sent an email to every councillor a couple of weeks ago. I got one reply, but it won't stop me. Um, you know, we will make Bude plastic free and we will continue to be a shining light. Um, we need to encourage all organisations to think as a whole. That's, that picture of strimming outside Sainsbury's, they strimmed the brambles, and it actually reminds me of a quote from Poltergeist, actually, but they didn't remove the litter. So you remember that quote? You moved the gravestones, but you didn't move the bodies, did you? <laughs> so, yeah, they haven't eliminated the problem, you know? And also, you know, the flex gets strimmed, it gets strimmed, the litter doesn't get picked up. Everybody needs to start thinking as a whole. We need to start working together. So if you're on the highways and you're strimming the hedgerows, come on, pick up the litter. Because if you don't, I'm picking it up later off the beach or it's going to microplastics. Um, we need to work to our strengths. You know, Pete from the Crackington crew, he is a master communicator. That's his strength. He galvanises people, gets them together. Ado's strength is the fact that he does shit and gets it done. You know, that's the point. The lifeguards here, they've got power in numbers. They're respected in the community. They do it well because that, they work into their strengths. Um, we need to tackle plastic at source um, with the two-minute solution. And we need to go inland with the two-minute litter packet. <laughs> and also, I want to talk to guys about the Yes Plastic Project, which is the idea of furnishing all beach cleans with a yes and no list. The yes list goes to recycling. The no list can't be recycled. We can do that between us all in this room. We can make that happen. Um, and the last one on here, which is left off probably, there's some gremlins in there, says some funding would be nice, right? Because all of this stuff has happened, you know, with the exception of Dolly being employed part-time, which she's only been done for three or four months, but she's on it for two years. Everybody that's done it is working voluntarily. Um, and, you know, just think what we could do with 50 grand, 100 grand, whatever, you know? We're having to turn projects down because we don't have the manpower. So, um, you know, the message, I, I'm not begging anybody because if anybody wants to step up, whatever, they can step up in any way whatsoever. But this thing's happening, it's rolling, you're all part of it. And um, I guess the next stage is to say thank you. And we're not worthy. <laughs>